Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all of you, my dear students. I welcome you to the 20th lecture of report writing skills. No need to get confused with what happened with my voice. Just a bit trouble with my throat due to the changing weather. But I am good enough to be able to deliver my lecture of today. So, starting from the point where we left as we were covering in our lecture number 19, concept of letter, its basics, if I take you towards that slide, basics, purposes and advantages of letter writing along with its concept, what the focus and then we moved onwards to the classification, the division in which we basically study a letter. We talked about the formal letter, its structure, the informal letter and its structure and then we moved onwards to look into the different kinds of letter where we focused and provided you with the example of an inquiry letter also known as the letter of inquiry. And I told you that we are going to cover the rest of the categories in our today's lecture. So the focus will start from complaint letter. The name itself suggests that it's a kind of letter in which you basically make a complaint to someone or to an individual. And why do you basically make a complaint? When something goes wrong and you want to highlight it, rectify it, or to improve it and to remove that problem, you basically complain. So if we look into the points which we have on the slide, complaint letter is also known as a claim letter because you basically claim that this thing was supposed to be in this form to be considered correct as it is not. Therefore, you complain that it should be rectified improved, corrected for its acceptance. That's why it's also known as a claim letter as you are claiming something for your right. Moving onwards, letter written to bring mistakes into notice. As I mentioned a minute ago, there is something which has happened wrong and now you want to make it right. So if there is a mistake, there is an error and you want to bring it into notice the kind of letter that you're going to write is, of course, known as the complaint letter. Basically, if you talk about the scenarios in which it is used, so it's written by a buyer to a seller highlighting all the problems faced at the time of receiving the order and its payment for resolution. So now you have a situation, you know who are the people who basically use this format or this kind of letter. So it's more or less related to buying and selling of material where there is a chance of a mistake or an error to occur and in order to rectify it, in order to highlight the issue or the problem which has taken place, you use this format and category of letter writing. So you of course, you receiving an order and if there is some problem in it, you are going to of course highlight, make a complaint by writing a complaint letter. This mode of letter writing, of course the complaint letter is considered to be like an option which comes after telephonic conversation and the email. These, the ones which I have discussed afterwards, being more quick and now you are well aware of how these are used, of course, because we have just covered how to write an email. If that is not being received and acknowledged from the other side, then to keep a written record of things and to bring things into physical reality, you basically put it or jot it down on a piece of paper to have an impact. So it, this is basically the option that you opt for, of course, after these two options remained unresponsive. So that's why it's written here that it comes after phone and email. Another point is of course that it goes in line with the previous point to formalize the situation and to bringing it into the limelight 
bringing it into the forefront the previous point doesn't mean that it's least important because of it it's coming at the end it's like when you are left up with no other option you have already tried everything still it's not of use then of course you think of the last option take it as a last option that now I have to write a letter because there is no other way the other person is responding to my continuous request which I am making time and again therefore you're going to formalize this situation and bring it into written form. Another purpose that you achieve as a result of this complaint writing is that you highlight your dissatisfaction with the provided services and products which you have received. So you basically complain but you're not satisfied with the provided service. And that is why you are writing a letter of complaint. Over here, you can clearly look at the example in front of you. This is like a format. You can take it as a template or a sample as well. Now you can clearly see, just keep in mind the structure of a letter, the format of a letter as we have studied, as we have gone through in our lecture number 19. We have the sender's details. We have the recipient or we call it as the insider's detail and then it happens that the first tick which I try to make it becomes like a cross but take it as a tick and uh, the first is not a cross that is also a tick. Now coming back towards the content now you can see we have a body after salutation now we have a body and then you are concluding it signing off and afterwards your signature you are providing the details pointer is this is how you basically develop that is how you basically follow the format of a complaint letter you can even look at the body where it's clearly written right after dear sir and ma'am I'm writing this letter to bring your attention that I am not satisfied with your quality of services provided at then of course the business name wherever it is I'm talking about the services I took wants to let you know that I was very upset with your staff performance if we look at the next paragraph I have been a regular client of your business now I'm completely disappointed I expect quality services and that is how you are basically reflecting your dissatisfaction that was the point which we studied in the last bullet of the last slide the previous slide and over here you get the reflection of it as well so this is the body this is the format a good example for you but if we look into each and every step if you are of course asked to write a letter of complaint you'll be wondering how to take a start things will be there in mind what to consider what not to consider how to take a start well we have some good points which can help you of course to take your own beginning starting of course from the introduction in everything you start from the introduction in case of writing a complaint letter once again this should be your focus what to focus on of course you are about to make a complaint something which is going to be a bit negative in tone because you will be highlighting the problem so what should be the way to highlight a problem that the other person may not get offended may not feel like that he's being attacked ridiculed mocked something is wrong should of course be raised and highlighted for its rectification and its removal and improvement but there is a way of providing that information so that basically you, you may not hurt the other person's feeling so if I look into it in the introduction you need to state the problem politely adopt politeness use the politeness strategies you know how to keep your tone polite we had this comparison in our previous lectures as well how to take things basically in such a way that your tone remains polite if I talk about the C's of communication of course you need the C of courtesy and consideration considering your audience and being respectful not to attack them directly therefore even if you have to state the problem do it politely although you might be angry over the service you have received very right but you want to suppress the anger do not reflect it because if you are reflecting anger the other person will say okay he is angry I'm not going to do it I'm going to make him even more angry by not responding to this email 
Well, that is not the ultimate objective of your email or your letter. You want him or her to take an action as a result of the email or the letter which you have written to that person, the complaint letter. Therefore, you expect a response and the response would come if you are using your tone and your language politely. Angry comments don't lead to communication. They lead to combat. A fight is going to start because the angry reader won't go out of your way to help you. Your best approach should be diplomacy. We are well aware what diplomacy is. It happens at international level, at national level, between countries to countries. We have ambassadors for that as well. Basically, what do they do? They try to negotiate. They try to lessen the tensions between countries. They try to strengthen the ties between countries because they basically negotiate. Whenever there is something happening between two countries, if it's something problematic, of course, they are the ones who try to settle down the situation, of course, by negotiate. And they basically use the same diplomacy, listening to the other person, highlighting their own perspective, reflecting on their perspective as well to resolve the whole situation, calming down the situation. So you basically do this diplomacy rather than attacking the other person, of course, try to state things indirectly so that they may also get the idea what you want to say and the other person's feelings are not hurt either. This is basically the point to be made here. Raise your point, that is your right because you are the one who is losing something. To strengthen your assertions in the introduction, what you can do to of course state things politely and being diplomatic includes supporting documents such as the following. Of course, you can start from serial numbers, dates of purchases, invoice numbers, check numbers, names of salespeople involved in the purchase and you need to also state that copies of these documents are enclosed. So you need to mention whatsoever you have referred to within your document, you have provided an enclosure. Now you know what that is. So you are going to add every document as an enclosure alongside the letter of complaint which you are sending to your addressee. That is going to set the right scenario for highlighting the problem with politeness and diplomacy rather than stating it directly because that will be more abusive and a tone which will hurt your addressee. Once the introduction is complete, in the discussions paragraph and section, explain in detail the problems which you have experienced. Now, of course, you have developed the kind of relationship which should be there if you want that other person to go into the details of what you have provided, what is there within the text, and now you can go into the details of the problem which you have experienced. So what you can provide in case of your discussion section, include details, dates, contact names, information about shipping, breakage information, or itemized listing of defects. So these are the things which could be made part of your discussion section. Once again, referring to the factual information, if you really have to make a point, you should have facts and figures. Once again, to authenticate your letter, making it valid and worth reading. In a complaint letter, everything should be explained with proof. This is basically the point of mentioning all these things which you are providing within the detail. Why are these there? Well, the point here is once again, once you have started complaining something, complaint should be there along with a proof. Because if you are accusing the other person for doing something wrong, they'll of course ask you in return, do you have a proof of what you are saying or for which you are accusing us? So, if you really are accusing the other person for something they have done or they may not have done, I'm saying they may not have done because if you are writing something for which you don't have a proof, then probably I would also say the same thing that they may not have done. But if you are sure of it, then you should have the proof to prove that the other person really is guilty of doing something wrong. And that is why you need to provide things within the discussion section with proof and in detail. 
help your audience understand the extent of the problem that is also a point which should be covered in case of your discussion section you have a space of course discussion is the point where you can go into the detail help your audience understand how difficult or how complex the situation is in which they are involved as a result of this thing which has happened as a result of the problem which they have faced so this complexity this difficulty should be reflected and its extent should be portrayed and conveyed to your audience within the discussion section this is the something which you are supposed to do in the discussion section then if we move ahead and come towards the conclusion this is the place where you need to sum it all up all the things which you have highlighted first of all bringing into the forefront within the introduction providing details along with evidence and proof you have provided everything and now the body needs to be concluded how it should be concluded well it should end positively this should be end of almost every letter even the ones which we are going to study in the upcoming lecture I mean uh, my apologies the points which we are going to cover in the upcoming slides you're going to see the other types of letter once again those lect lectures and uh, those letters would be ending with this positive ending this is my point basically that the ending should be positive in its tone because if it's negative at the end this will be the thing remembered by your reader and if the purpose is a call to action or a response that response won't be coming from the other side and of course this is something which we do not want to happen therefore the ending of the letter should be positive in tone remember you want to ensure cooperation with the vendor and you want to be courteous reflecting your company's professionalism so the point here is once again you want to maintain courtesy and consideration the seas of importance especially for building and maintaining relationship these should be there even in case of a letter of complaint that is why these become very very important and were discussed in detail with you as well over here now after having a clear idea of how it should be structured we can now look into the example to get a better idea and a good idea of how to write a letter of complaint if you look here once again the format is very much clear for you you can get an idea inside address and then you have this salutation you are clearly mentioning the subject making a reference providing an evidence with reference to order number this now you have provided some problems which you have faced i'm writing to inform you that the goods we order from your company have not been supplied correctly then you are providing the evidence in the form of date we placed an order with your firm for 12,000 ultra super long life batteries consignment arrived yesterday but contained only 1200 therefore there is a big difference being highlighted this error put our firm in a difficult position as we had to make some emergency purchases to fulfill our commitments to all customers and now this has caused of course some inconvenience therefore what you want is i am writing to ask you to please make up the shortfall immediately and to ensure that such errors do not happen again otherwise we're going to face problem and we may have to look elsewhere lightly touching the fact that they may have to go somewhere else i look forward to hearing from you by return ending is once again highlighting the fact that you want to hear from the other person therefore maintaining that relationship therefore maintaining that courtesy and consideration so this was the point that i mentioned try to end things positively again you have seen this positive tone at the end and at the overall structure of a letter as well that is how you structure a complaint letter to have a better idea another example this is a letter written to the administrative officer as you can see over here along with the address and if i come over here at this point i attended your exhibition sound system 
and found it informative and interesting but unfortunately my enjoyment of the event was spoiled by a number of organizational problems and then you have explained them like firstly secondly this is also a very good way that whenever you are making points accessible document design i remember it well when we talked about mentioning or jotting down things on a piece of paper make it like an accessible document by a design which is of course accessible providing things in an order organized way this is one example a very good example of uh, mentioning points one by one so this these are the problems and you can clearly look at the way these have been highlighted some minor typos could be there as well but that is how you basically structure because this is how you basically structure a sample look forward to hearing from you and then you basically bring it to an end now once uh, the complaint letter is complete we can now look into the example of a cover letter example will be coming of course the concept of cover letter cover letter is very much important the word itself indicates that it acts like a cover of another document which you are basically sending so it becomes the cover letter of that document to support it to supplement it but basically providing its detail so if I provide you with a definition supplement to the resume that includes more detail information about yourself resume mentioned because cover letters are generally demanded and asked for in case when you are interested to apply for a job for a vacancy you have found of course and then you want to send them your resume or your CV you are first of all asked to provide a cover letter in addition to the resume and this cover letter is placed first and then your CV or resume comes afterwards because it acts like a cover so therefore what is expected to be there in this cover letter of course all the references whose details are there in a CV or resume shows off your qualification to a prospective employer so of course if they want to see your skills in detail they'll look into the resume and your curriculum vitae but if they really want to know the gist of why you have applied or what's so special about you well they'll look at your cover as you have like all of a sudden it's stuck in my mind why do we have this option of cover photo well cover photo is also like a cover your cover and you try to make it the best cover which would reflect your whole personality on social media just the way you reflect your cover photo over here in a similar way in your writing you try to reflect yourself and your resume your curriculum vitae with a cover letter so it has to be perfect expresses your interest in a position position of course the vacancy for which you are applying and highlights your key points in your resume of course in case of your resume you would have multiple things which you have covered all the good qualities all the good points or your abilities your interest passion achievements many things are there in case of your resume and if you want to highlight all the key points just to act like a guideline to go through your resume and your CV this cover letter becomes important because you have the space of highlighting the key features the key points which are there in your resume you're going to cover them all that is how cover letter becomes important prior preparation basically means that cover letter is not something that you can just write all of a sudden if you are asked to apply for a job and you are going to write a letter going to place it in front of a resume and you're going to send it over no you need to do some prior preparation if you really want to write a cover letter and an effective cover letter which is going to have an impact and an effect what things should be there within your mind with which you're going to write the letter first thing comes first and 
of course, the first thing which should be there within your mind is a thorough research, comprehensive, complete research regarding the employer and the company. This is also something that I used to study, that I have looked into detail, that whenever you're going for an interview as well, it is always recommended to go into the details of your, your employer or the company where you are applying to have an idea of what they deal with, what their expectations are. In a similar way, though it's not an interview, it's like the first impression which you're going to make through writing. Therefore, even before writing this cover letter itself, it's a good idea to first do this research regarding the employer's expectation, their task and the company's detail. What do they deal with? What's their basic purpose? What do they do? Once you're aware of it, they may ask you, of course, in the interview as well, what are your expectations being part of this company? When, when we took a start, when we started applying and when I was going through my own experience, this is like a common question which they ask that how are you going to bring a change? What do you expect? So if you are aware of what do they do, you will have an idea how to answer them back or how are you going to contribute for that company, for the, your employer and for the organization. Therefore, this prior research becomes important and is a necessary part even in case of writing a cover letter. Review websites, brochures, pamphlets and any other pertinent material because all these things related to that company, that organization or in particular your employer would help you in the long run to answer back anything which would come at your way at the time of the interview even in case of the correspondence which may take place in case of a letter. You would be aware of everything and therefore you will have a clear idea what to include in case even of your letter. This prior research becomes important not only in case of your physical assessment in case of the interview, but these stages are also very much important to mention those points which would appeal to your employer because you're going to make them part of your cover letter as well. That's how research, websites, brochure, pamphlets and every pertinent material becomes important. Try to speak with current employees for getting the inside perspective. I really like this point. The reason is those individuals that you're going to meet or if there is a possibility to meet them can really give you the inside picture. And if you can see the inside picture, man, it can really help you a lot to adjust yourself within the upcoming environment of which you will become a part. That's why this point is really important. Let's suppose you have a friend working in any organization and you want to, you have the same interests, you have a common field and that's why you tell that friend, I really am interested to join the same organization but I need your help. What kind of environment is there? How do you people work there? Uh, how many hours do you generally spend there? What kind of work it is? What is the extent of the workload? Do you get the break hours? How many breaks do you get, leaves, how many meetings, everything. The point here to make is that once you know the inner scenario, even at the time of the interview, you'll have an idea, okay, oh, these were the individuals which I was expected. Yeah, my friend told me about it. These are the people, these are the focal persons who are going to assess me, who are going to evaluate me. And that is why I'm going to answer their questions because you already will have an inside perspective. That's how you will be more confident and this confidence is going to make you very successful to become your future employee because the same reflection would be there in your mind while you are preparing your cover letter and that's how it becomes important. If you move onwards, time to demonstrate yourself better than the rest. Like this one also comes from this point. Like if you know what kind of environment is there, how are the employees working, you know their level, you know the frequency, you know their strength, the way they handle tasks which are assigned to them. If you know their capacity and now you want to prove yourself that you are better than them, you will know how to do it and you will know how to reflect the same ideas within your cover letter. 
that's how this thing becomes important and this cover letter provides you the space to demonstrate yourself to be better than the rest and this is something which you should be prepared of that you should be well aware of within your mind before writing the cover letter brainstorm to prove why you are the ideal candidate for the job so this means the pre-writing does not turn out to be uh, just mere lecture it's being used in every lecture it's being used in every practical walk of life for example now you are about to write a cover letter and that is how the pre-writing strategy of brainstorming turned out to be quite handy that's how this becomes important and this is the stage where you need to brainstorm some of the points which should make you stand prominent conspicuous from the rest of the group and that's how you find your way inside the organization so now i have time to move ahead some of the precautions which i want you to keep in mind as well in case of writing a cover letter while you are writing a cover letter you need to maintain this you attitude now we had a good talk about it you and i clearly know what you attitude is of course when you are referring towards the second person when you are referring towards your readers your addressee your target audience of course in case of a cover letter your employer so you need to focus more on the employer the company its advantages and organization how are you going to contribute for the organization how are you going to benefit the organization how are you going to bring a change within an organization organization is becoming the focus the one getting the advantage with your services with your availability and that is how you basically make it the focal point by using the you attitude rather than saying i can do this i can do that you need to first focus on how the company can get benefit from your services if the company is getting the benefit you're becoming important automatically therefore your attitude should be maintained within your cover letter the the overall length also becomes very important in case of writing a cover letter that's why it's written over here shouldn't be more than one page and not more than three to four paragraphs if you are keeping your points clear and these are being mentioned clearly on a single page i told you readers especially the employers the managerial staff they have just i guess i would say even seconds sometimes few minutes and few seconds to give a reading to what you have to offer here if it's something really important and of course coming from the higher authorities they can give it a detailed reading but over here you are the one applying for the job being at the very beginning level therefore they'll have just few minutes for you and therefore if you're keeping things small very short brief to the point meaning by the application of seven c's of communication concreteness conciseness clarity courtesy once again keeping things short clear and to the point you are providing them within a single page you are being more cautious you are taking their less time therefore they'll also know this person is well aware of our importance and our time is he is giving us less time to spend on his content therefore he is smart enough to know how to work in an organization so this itself will become a plus point for you if i talk about the next point your purpose is to highlight your resume's selling points therefore no need to mention any negative or any weaknesses just to show the fact that i am being honest here these are my weak points no we do not need such things asking for compassion sympathy we want what you can do what's your ability everyone is born with abilities everyone is gifted and of course if you look into yourself you will find some good qualities that you can highlight even within your resume and within your cv this is the space to mention it you have a clearly defined purpose and that purpose is to highlight your resume selling points which you have mentioned within your resume this is the space no need to mention any weak side of your personality 
again the same point that's why these are like interrelated focus on the plus remove all the minus just reflect the positive side of your personality the side which is needed within the organization and the side which is going to bring improvement within the working company stay positive and mention all the good points to impress your employers so your overall tone should also remain positive you need to mention just the good points this positive and plus will simply impress your employers and they will of course certainly think of and they'll consider you for an interview call all these things should go together simultaneously to bring a difference remember to sign your letter as well this point is also very much important you want to authenticate things you want to claim things that this belongs to you therefore this signature also becomes very important doesn't take much time a second or two I guess but the point here is this makes it authentic you are claiming the thing which you have written you want you simply say reflect with the signature that I really am reflecting things with sincerity everything which I have written here I hereby declare that these things are true and can be tested don't go over a page why because once again the reader will have just time to once again read not more than three to four paragraphs not more than one page if you are writing anything more than one page will be wasted more chances of being wasted therefore avoid it keep it to one page maintain friendly and professional tone throughout the letter because you want to reflect yourself to be a professional a mature person who knows how to do task how to work in an environment where you have to work where you are supposed to work act as a professional as an employee therefore you need to maintain a professional tone and once again a friendly tone don't try to reflect yourself as someone who is superior who knows everything even more than the employer themselves show humility respect courtesy and honor your employers by maintaining a professional and friendly tone being respectful towards your audience now we are going to look at some of the writing steps that you need to keep in mind while preparing while writing your cover letter well first of all set the scene and explain why you are writing this should be the first part of your cover letter in which you are setting the scene in the very initial section stating your purpose once you have stated the purpose you're going to provide details and supporting evidence for what makes you better than the other candidates once again the same point for which you have done all the brainstorming in the initial stage before you have like started writing the cover letter you have considered all the points now you know you have brainstormed and now you have collected you have listed certain points which are setting you apart now is the stage once you have stated your purpose you need to write them clearly lucidly vividly very carefully so that it may not even harm the readers and they should clearly state what you can do once you have stated the points which are like setting you apart making you different and reflecting your capability and capacity you make a space to receive an interview call as well this is also an uh, interesting point the reflection of good qualities capacities and abilities is not or should not go in vain of course you should bring it to a section where you demand or you request an interview call because that is going to be the ultimate outcome which is going to make a difference what's the point of stating all the qualities if the other person says okay okay this person can do this okay fine and then placing your document aside because you have just mentioned the things therefore you should bring it to the section where you clearly state that the purpose of mentioning all these qualities is the expectation of an interview call so I look forward as you are going to see in the examples as well how you're going to structure it and of course once you have mentioned and organized your content in such way you proofread and edit to remove all the errors and typos before sending it 
to avoid any misconception or a bad impression which these minor grammatical errors are going to develop in the mind of your readers, your employers, the company who is going to hire you. So that's why this proofreading, editing also becomes very much important and should be there in mind. Now if we move ahead, we are going to do this detailed analysis of how you are going to start with your opening paragraph in case of your cover letter. Of course, you're going to be stating your purpose, why you're doing this. Now, this statement should be done in such a way that you grab the reader's attention. This should be the point because otherwise they won't be interested to go into the detail of what is coming ahead. It should be done grabbing the reader's attention. Discuss, of course, the position you are applying for. Of course, you need to mention because that is how you're going. They are going to get the reference of what you are referring to. So they require a reference, they require a guideline and then they'll have a space to judge you and to evaluate you based on a framework or some principle which they have within their company. You can mention the source through which you receive the information about the job as well. This is also okay. Even I have seen in multiple links whenever we apply, there is always a space or a point. You heard about us from and then there are like like multiple choice in which social media friend family newspaper these are like some of the options and then you pick one of them so uh, in certain scenarios and situation they ask you directly while you are sending your details and of course in case of your cover letter you have the space of providing such details yourself so do it as well highlight the main points covered in the letter once again, you can take it in such way that whenever you are writing something in detail and then you write something with reference to that detail which, which is like coming in the beginning just in a similar way as we have studied in the very initial sections of report writing. Why do we write a summary or why do we write like an abstract? We provide a summary of what's coming ahead. We sum it all up because we know the basic point that in a professional environment people have less time, they have much to do. We try to give them just the basic information and then of course we provide the details. If they are interested to look in the details they can go into it otherwise they always have the summary to get an idea what's the gist. In a similar way highlight the main points of your cover letter and that is what you do in case of your opening paragraph. Once you have written it you can do it in this form. An example here. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Pierce, as the enclosed resume attest, then reference to the job, the customer support position and retires in the Atlas group is a perfect fit with my qualification. My experience working as a help desk student assistant in the division of IT at this university, past experience has prepared me for the technological and use support for this, making me an ideal candidate for this job. You are setting yourself to be an ideal candidate in the very beginning making of course some references as well so that the employer may know for which post you are applying that is how you basically start with the opening paragraph and as I was about to tell you in case of your body paragraph emphasize your top selling points or highest qualification this is the space where you need to provide the detail of what makes you capable what makes you strong what makes you set apart from the rest of the group. So this is the place where you can mention of course your highest qualification or your abilities which you consider to be the top selling points. Of course mentioning how these qualifications can benefit the company you are applying for. Providing examples of your achievement that have benefit previous companies. This is also very much important point that if you want to prove yourself to be a professional and if you want to show that you already have a past experience working with other companies and you have provided them multiple benefits by referring to them, be it awards, grants, achievements, certificates, anything, you can mention it over here. That will make you even a more ideal um, applicant for this post. Again, the point is you need to be specific in your description. Don't try to just, you know, beat about the bushes and trying to 
come up with general stories no you have to be specific providing specific details because these specific details are going to make a difference will set you apart from the rest of the group <clears throat> now look at the example of a body paragraph as my resume highlights I have offered high responsibility computer and software support for faculty staff and students this experience along with constant home use of computer has given me a thorough background of many different forms of software and OS including window Apple office Dreamweaver, many more I have become very comfortable with, uh, performing hardware upgrades Windows Mac in addition I master new skills point is you are simply setting yourself apart from everyone by providing your top selling points your qualification everything being covered here in this area cover letter closing paragraph this is like once you have provided all the selling points now you're moving towards the ending this is the stage once again you know that the readers have gone through much of your detail it's time to appreciate them for their time so you thank the reader for their time spent and that is not the end of the story as I mentioned divided into three parts of course so you stating your purpose then presenting your top selling points is not just the end of the story otherwise they'll throw it in trash you need to mention that you expect an interview and this is the time to ask for an interview asking won't be enough if you have the space you can always request for a specific date and time that seems feasible to you in journal they provide you the date and time as well but in such certain scenarios you may also have the space of providing the date and time which suits you or which seems feasible to you so that you can do and once again that is not the end of the story you need to create an active ending active ending is also a very interesting concept being that you have to end it in such a way that not keeping it to them to contact you or to call you at the time of the interview rather you can simply say I'll be looking forward to hearing from you and after a while after such number of days I'm going to contact you for further correspondence or to know whether my application or my cover letter my resume is being considered or has been put aside for the next post which you are going to advertise and announce but for that you need to be a bit active this is why it's called an active ending we're going to see it as well please take the time to look over my resume and feel free to contact my references me and my references because you provide references as well at the end of your resume and your curriculum we did I would love to further discuss this position in person now this is the point that I was highlighting at the end I will follow up with you in a few days to answer any preliminary question you might have in the meantime please do not hesitate to contact me at your number thank you for your time and consideration thanking is also good very good because you have to thank them and appreciate them for the time which they have spent but now this part is very interesting it should be there in mind of course you need to provide them the number giving them the space to contact you as well but to be active on your part as well to keep a contact and keeping in touch with them as well in case they get silent of course you have the space and you being an active writer and the one who has done this active ending in a position to simply contact them to know what's being done regarding my cover letter and my resume is it being considered or not so that is how it all depends on how you have structured it but it's a good way of structuring your cover letter so this is the example a style which is used in the scenario which is being provided at the very top you can of course do some minor changes within its structure because now you know the way in which you're going to start the opening the body and the closing so as every organization has its own requirements and demands you're going to structure your body paragraph accordingly reflecting your skills to be matching with the kind of requirements which they are seeking 
So that is how you can bring all the changes. But example is once again going to be quite helpful as you can clearly see over here. That is how you make a reference to your CV. Then referring to the kind of degree that you have and the way it has prepared you for the position. It involved a great deal of independent research. Then uh, look mentioning some of the other qualities which you have which makes you the ideal candidate. I'm a fast and accurate writer with a keen eye for detail and I should be very grateful for the opportunity to progress to market reporting. And then thanking of course for the time with the reader has spent over reading your content and then looking forward to hearing from the other person in the near future. So that is how you basically structure it. Looking at another sample letter where the situation is not that defined, not advertised or you're not sure what kind of vacancy would be there. So this structure is also very ideal for an organization that you of course idealize or the one in which you want to work of course you can take a first step of sending such a letter that we can simply give a reading to to have an idea how to structure it dear miss shaheen i'm writing to inquire if you have any vacancies in your company the company of course which you idealize i enclose my cv for your information as you can see i have expensive extensive vacation work experience in office environments and then you talk about it i'm conscientious conscientious person who works hard and pays attention to detail i'm flexible quick to pick up new skills and eager to learn from others I have excellent references and would be delighted to discuss any possible vacancy with you at your convenience pointer is once again things not predefined but you idealizing to become part of a company want to work in that company therefore asking uh, the hr of course whether there is any space where you can fit in based on the abilities which you have so of course you can go for such speculative letter writing structure as well for preparing your cover so hopefully uh, these structures along with the detail which i provided regarding the cover letter were helpful for you to write a cover letter of course because the purpose of mentioning it in detail is that these will be used immediately after you're done with your graduation and now you're looking forward to join some company that's how this becomes important and that is why discussed in detail once you become a part of a working organization, you will come across two basic categories of letters and defined and classified based on the manner and the content, which is basically the main part of that letter. On the basis of which we basically categorize it into a good news letter and a bad news letter. Now these are also very essential components, very essential categories of letter part of a professional environment that's how become very important to study we're going to start of course from the good news letter not that complex not that complicated or very hard to write you just need to have a basic idea some useful points which you need to keep in mind especially while writing the next category which is coming ahead but of course if you know how to write a good news you will know how to structure the bad news as well because you're going to even mention the bad news keeping in mind how you structure a good newsletter so once we look into it you'll have a clear idea if i ask you what's a good newsletter a letter in which you have a good news so this is how you can simply define it in extending the definition you can say letter which provides a good news a good message or some information which is favorable it can be of course in the form of an appreciation <clears throat> it can be in the form of thanking individual and congratulation and felicitation so all these things are good news because you are congratulated based on some award some achievement which you have gained so as a result of it you get a good news or the good news itself is regarding some award or some achievement so for which you write a good news if you talk about the content which is basic part of such good newsletter. So it's basically positive, it's encouraging, uplifting, motivating, and a desirable content. Something that an employee desire while work working in an organization and being part of a company. If we talk about 
the steps of course that you need to consider <clears throat> because while I'll be talking about the bad newsletter once again such points should be there in mind in the form of steps while writing a bad newsletter as well but if I talk about the good newsletter first thing once again should be the analysis of the audience who is my audience a fellow a boss well of course you can share the good news with the boss of course it can be with the subordinates as well someone who is working under you or who is like a belonging to the lower staff so it could be anyone so first decide who is your audience with whom you're going to interact then clarify the subject within your mind what is the basic subject matter which is being highlighted and how are you going to convey it clarity of the subject Search for all the factual information to be included within the newsletter. Within the good newsletter, if you are sharing the good news, the other person is not like going to take it in real all of a sudden. But if you are providing the factual information based on these facts and figures, you are getting this good news in the form of congratulation or achievement or an award. But because you have collected all the facts and figures and then conveying the factual information, use of comprehensible vocabulary is also very much important don't take it uh, to be too tacky don't use such words or vocabulary which becomes difficult for the other person to grasp and absorb and understand keep the language comprehensible vocabulary should be of such sort which can be absorbed digested and understood by the other person and to make things work all together and simultaneously once again, do the editing and proofreading because that is going to make it a perfect good newsletter. Now, how to write the introduction, introductory session of your good newsletter? Explaining the purpose and subject matter. As the focus is a good news to so begin with a positive tone. This should be there within your mind because you're going to share like a good news and something good is always something which you want to say at the very first place. So the letter also gives you the space to mention it at the very start because that is going to strengthen your bond, your relationship with your addressee and your reader. For example, in case of appreciating a colleague, you have proved to be indispensable again. Your work for the textbook committee has made all of our jobs easier so this point itself has become like a big point of appreciation at the very beginning you are clearly stating in the introduction that this is the thing which has done an advantage and is like a good news so that's why you're stating it clearly within the introduction in case of the promotion of an employee example could be like congratulations we are pr proud to offer you an early promotion and then the other person will be wondering, really? How? This would be a question which would come in mind even for you if you were working like an employee and all of a sudden getting a promotion, let's say an early promotion, you would be saying, what's so special? So how are you going to get all the details that what's so special about you? So for that, of course, within the good newsletter, after the introduction, you have the discussion section where you basically provide such details that what's so special about you. So in case of your discussion section, you have to justify the point which you have made in the introduction. So you provide relevant details. In case of the appreciation, thank you for performing the following services. And then you have all the things stated over here. Meeting all the sales reps to convey, reviewing the text with computer-aided design, screening the textbook options. You have stated all the good qualities, the way you have done it everything all those things because of which you were appreciation or uh, you were basically appreciating the other person your colleague these are the reasons in case of <clears throat> a promotion so now you are providing once again a discussion all those reasons because of which you are becoming special you have earned a great raise to pkr this is this the amount increase being mentioned here based on the following reasons Productivity, efficiency, supervisory skills. So these points have made you special, being highlighted very clearly and lucidly.
good news letters conclusion is also very much important because this should clearly state what you are planning next to do as a result of all the things which you have mentioned in the introduction and the body date and time is also very much important to simply execute that plan which you are making significance of the shared date and time should be mentioned as well as why such date and such time has been decided what's so important why not any other date and time so mention that as well example is going to make things clear due to your assistance we have decided on the text and plan to place our orders this April this will allow us to do this this and this your work has made a difference and the appreciation is coming in case of promotion because of your excellent work you will receive your pay increase in the first of next month you deserve it good work so what is the next course of action your pay increase and it will be done next of month so things and points very much clear and that is how you basically sum up a good newsletter but now a bad newsletter even I have become sad because now I am going to talk about the bad newsletter because there is a bad news not for you but basically bad news for the person who will get a letter from you in future when you will be sending a bad newsletter but to make him less sad to make her less sad you need to structure your bad newsletter in such a way that it's not that offending not that much abusive or not that much hard to read make it soft in tone although of course I would say it's a letter which provides a bad news a bad message and unfavorable information what could it be in future of course when you're a big officer rejecting a job applicant denying an employee a raise rejection of a proposal for getting a grant rejecting a customer's request for refunding when something is wrong well as the main point is a bad news you have to structure your correspondence in such a way to avoid offending your readers now how can you do that in case of your introduction you need to be very careful right from the very introduction because you're about to share bad news how you're going to do it is that be very careful while structuring your introduction your initial section as the point is do not directly state the bad news on the very face of that person immediately don't do it directly first develop a space and develop a situation come up with some points which are mutually recognized by you and the other person that okay yeah these are the things okay you know that these things are happening between us we are dealing we are buying and purchasing things we are selling things but then all of a sudden there was some problem so of course this point which you have raised in the beginning that you know things are happening this way is the introduction that is how you first create a space to uh, bring up the bad news but don't state it directly that I have received something bad from you it's very wrong and you're fired you're not getting a promotion this will simply humiliate the other person and you never are expected to do such a thing if you really want to become a good professional so no need for concisely stating the bad news it would be very harsh and abrupt don't this is this this is the place where uh, please avoid the sea of conciseness concreteness don't be that clear don't be that concise don't be that concrete that you simply say it on the face of the other person you're fired you're demoted no please first mention that you know we had a good time we know of, and we had some good expectations from you that you're going to do this but unfortunately you know we have very high demands uh, the time requires that we have to do things very clearly therefore uh, we have to do this there is a difference between the way I said it you're fired and the way I've said it in this way this is how you can write a very direct bad newsletter and an indirect bad newsletter now you're getting an idea so prepare the reader for the upcoming information and state with content which your reader can accept as well it start from the beginning as in case of rejecting a job applicant thank you for your recent letter of application as you can imagine we received many letters from highly qualified applicants so you have indicated the fact 
many other qualified applicants are also applying there which means he'll be thinking mind maybe had a less chance because of which he's saying many other are very highly qualified in case of terminating this relationship between vendor and a client as you know our business demands exact tolerances and precise workmanship because of these requirements uh, your company has for the quality production we are happy to pursue a long term contract with you we were happy we were and are expecting to pursue this contract with you but due to reasons it can't happen but now you have stated things in the introduction developed the space swayed things now is the time and no more delays you have the space present that bad unavoidable news as it has to come so in case of a job applicant mention it but in a way which is not that harsh although we appreciate your interest in airtel the advertisement specifically requires that all applicants have an ms in computer science and at least 5 years of experience we also suggested a knowledge of fiber optics however your years and over here your years of experience fall below our requirements and resume does not mention anything of this sort look at the way things have provided within detail and then the thing which is missing is coming at the end that is how you basically structure a bad news in case of such relation your last two shipments contain flawed goods in fact we found these problems and then you have stated some problems over here as well so you first create a space and then provide the problem and that problem should be stated with courtesy as well you do not wish to spoil the relationship conclusion once again as i mentioned earlier should be positive try to make it positive with even within a bad newsletter do not leave your readers feeling defeated and hopeless try to maintain the following relations at the end you need to maintain such relation because of course you may be needing them in future of course you might be thinking that the person was not according to our criteria but what if that other person really was capable and even if he or she works harder becomes even more competent and capable than the employees that you have so anything can happen and then you'll be ashamed of asking him or her to apply once again for the job in your organization so do not spoil your relationship maintain them try to maintain them even with the with the bad news which you have shared try to end with a positive note so conclude by giving your readers an opportunity for future success give them a hope that it's possible that you will come again if you work on some minor things you will be capable enough you'll have everything and you'll be able to join us so provide option which will allow your readers to get back with good graces seek employment in future and reapply so try to make your readers feel as happy as possible that is the point in case of a job applicant if you have this knowledge or and have acquired additional job experience which pertain to our this these were the things missing then you will say we would be happy to reconsider your application in any case we will keep your letter on file when new position open up your letter will be assessed good luck so you are ending up with a very good note and this is the quality even of a bad newsletter in case of ending a relation if you can correct these problems we would be willing to reconsider our stance we have enjoyed working with you and look forward the possibility for future contact very beautifully ended bad newsletter even i like the bad newsletter even more than the good newsletter because good newsletter is all about sharing good news you don't have to work for it but for a bad newsletter you have to really structure your writing in such a way that you have to keep in mind not to spoil the relationship not to hurt the other person and you have to share a bad news so this demands exercise and i want you to do some practice for especially writing a bad newsletter so at the end i would like to mention some of the essential tips based on what we have covered in lecture 19 and 20 which would help you to write any form of letter be professional be respectful by sending your letter in a timely way do not delay things do it on time when responding to previous correspondence always good to repeat important information it's also a wonderful opportunity to ask for any question and clear misunderstanding which might be there when asked for advice respond quickly give advice only on subject you have been asked about do not 
build castles in the air. Keeping your advice simple, talking to the point, making it easy for the other person to respond and discuss the subject matter in greater length. If you have been asked for advice, do not feel that you can give it. Express your regret and suggest that someone else would be in a better position to be of assistance. Like if you are not in a position to respond, you can always refer to someone who can do it in a better way. Nothing wrong with it. Avoid comments or expressions of personal opinion unless they are complimentary or needed. Otherwise, avoid them. Keeping things again factual. Even if your letter contains negative information like declining a job offer, so you need to keep your tone positive and respectful. When responding, a long letter is generally not necessary. Just include enough information to address the issue at hand. It is often a good idea to thank the reader for his or her time and interest at the end as you have seen in each and every letter which we have studied. So some of the tips which can help you to write your letter, be it of any form, some of the major forms have been discussed because they are like something which you will be writing that you will be coming across that's why it was needed to make you well prepared for it but you can of course use these formats write any kind of letter because now you know how to write an informal and how to write a formal letter. Letters may seem outdated but there still are many uses of letters. There are five types of letters based on their usage. Inquiry letter, complaint letter, cover letter, good news letter, and bad news letter. Let's begin with the inquiry letter. The inquiry letter asks someone for specific information. It is usually a short and precise document. Some tips to keep in mind while composing an inquiry letter are Clarify your intent in the introduction, specify your needs in the discussion, and conclude precisely. Next is the complaint letter. A complaint letter is written to bring mistakes into notice. To compose a complaint letter, it is important to use diplomacy. In the introduction, politely state the problem and include supporting details such as serial numbers, dates, and names of people involved. In the discussion, explain the problems experienced in detail and end the letter positively. The cover letter is for a job application and is attached to your resume. It enhances the resume by highlighting key points and providing more details about your qualification, interest, and suitability for the job. To create an effective cover letter, in the opening paragraph, grab the reader's attention and discuss the position you are applying for. In the body, emphasize your top selling points or highest qualification, show how these skills and qualifications will benefit the company, and give examples of past achievements. In the closing paragraph, thank the readers for their time, ask for an interview, and set a time and date for follow-up. Next is the good news letter, which provides good news, appreciation, or felicitations. Here are some tips. As the focus is the good news, begin with a positive tone and explain the purpose in the introduction. In the discussion, justify the point and provide relevant details. In your last paragraph, state what you plan next and mention the time and date to execute the future plan. Last but not the least is the bad news letter, which presents a bad news or unfavorable information to the reader. The bad news letter should be composed carefully. Do not start with the bad news. First prepare the reader for the upcoming information, then present the bad news in the discussion. After breaking the news, neutralize the tone by providing positive options. Do not leave the reader hopeless. End by giving the reader an opportunity for future success. Keep the focus of the message in mind while choosing the type of letter you write. So with this, I bring you towards the conclusion we have successfully covered all these in a very fine manner and with this I'm going to take you towards the next lecture and of course in the next section uh, but over here the talk regarding the letter is complete hope I'm hopeful that you will be able to write very perfect letter with some good practice you can of course try the other categories that are easily available online as well but these are the important ones which is why they were discussed in detail even I enjoyed it despite the fact I had a bit problem in my throat I kept on drinking some sips of water that did a good job I enjoyed giving because it was like a first experience with a throat problem to deliver a lecture I enjoyed it hopefully you did too as the way I did hard work I expect the same hard work from you as well 
So till the next lecture, take good care of yourself. I'll make sure I come with a good throat <laughs> uh, by taking some good medicines that I am already taking. But till then, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next lecture. Assalamu alaikum.